Okay, friends, before we get started with this video, I want to thank AintGotNoGED.com for sponsoring this video. So I wanted to go ahead and go on Amazon and show you guys some of the cases and the gowns and everything. So when you get your imaginary GED, you can place uh, the air inside of it or maybe a piece of loose leaf, even a cigarette. So as you can see, they have these beautiful colors. They have blue and navy and burgundy and green and black. Oh, friends look at this you can get a package deal you can get your gown and your cap so you're not all cap and no gown along with your diploma case quick little disclaimer about the gowns and the caps the gowns run really funny so if you're on the larger side you may want to reconsider because you'll end up looking like you're about to hit the stage with kirk franklin and the family in 1996 tamala man <laughs> okay friends let's continue Okay, I also wanted to share these beautiful diploma frames with you in the case that you want to put your air inside of a frame or maybe a cigarette or a piece of loose leaf paper, who knows? Anything but a GED, am I right, friends? Also, you may want to spruce up your dry ass walls opposed to having pictures of like LA gangster rappers, RIP to them, no disrespects, or a random Buddha, you know, just tacky shit. Anyway, friends, Make sure you use code ain't got no GED for 15% off for the next 30 days. Hey friends, how are you? I hope your day has been nothing short of amazing as it should be. I know you're probably looking like, wait a minute, sis, who is this? Well, a certain someone told me that my emoji was ugly, so I decided to use hers. Am I right, friends? So you know me, friends. I'm just cruising down these YouTube streets in my two small Mercedes 2010 that I owe $8,000 on still, but I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm a boss. And um, I happen to pull up in front of, you know, the web of lies, right? So I parked, struggled to get out, and lo and behold, who is it? The web of lies <laughs> telling lies. So I'm just minding my business, you know, just lurking, trying to see what she's going to say next, still struggling to get my big ass out of that little car because it was hard to get in. How am I going to get out? <laughs> you know, and I happened to hear her indirectly shade me. I said, me, <laughs> you're talking to me. So, of course, I commented, let's check out the clip. Now, I think that my baby mama also said something. I think this is what I heard. She said that I'd be watching reactors all day and all night and blah, 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 Okay. So, she hasn't been around me, like around me, around me in over like a year. Look, sis, you can squint those baggy, puffy, dented eyes all you want. Look up in the sky act as if you're oblivious but we all know you watch sis you watch hence your next statement so she doesn't really know what i do now if i was ever around her and i did put on a put on a reactors video or i watch something so i'd be trying to tell you bitches you're not special Okay, you're only special to me in that moment. And I wouldn't even call it special. I would just call it your only relevance. Exactly. And that's what we be trying to tell you. You're only relevant in the moments we speak on you because you're a negligent mother. You're a thought. You're promiscuous. You have no pride. You're a trick. You take care of men and you're a horrible wife. Well, you were. Yeah. So that's the only time you're relevant. Touche. In that moment, because you're speaking on me. So sure, I might entertain it. I might look at it. I might see the dumb shit coming out your mouth or not see the dumb shit coming out your mouth because half of you bitches are coward as fuck and don't even put your fucking face on the screen because you know you ugly, okay? Even your emojis ugly, bitch, you're ugly. And that is the problem right there. You're in denial. There's no, I might watch it. I might, no, girl, you are going to. You will watch it. You do watch it. And you're a strange husband. Just confirmed, sis. And how shallow are you to be calling somebody's emoji ugly? I just used every single one of your features and look at this emoji. Is it cute? Is it? And really quick, I forgot something else to mention. I will sing circles around you. Do you hear me? Sing from your diaphragm, sis, not your nose, okay? Don't make me do a cover to one of your whack-ass songs and embarrass you.
And that is exactly why I said you can't sit with me in no aspect of life. Trust me, sis, not even physically, mentally, nothing. You can't sit with me. You can't sit with us. You know, like for Mean Girls, yeah, that's for you. And I'm going to speak up for every reactor that you try to shade and talk about referring to their looks because at the end of the day, you're a whole catfish, a big Parmesan crusted catfish. You know how your little alter ego comes out when your face is all beat, you know, contouring the chin that's not going anywhere, putting on your little eyeliner and your dark jet black eyebrows, all of that. You, you notice how you become a different person? That's because you already know the vibes. You know you're basic without it. You're basic. And just because you come on camera looking dusty and crusty doesn't mean that you're secure with the way you look. It just means that you have no pride because that's who you are. We all know this. Look at how you leave the house. Nightgowns and bonnets and visors and leggings. You're dusty. You're so dusty. You're tacky. Like, please, you cannot sit with me. I'm trying to be nice here. Please don't make me do it to you. I'm telling you, when my friends see this video, they're going to be like, you're really responding to someone who wears a Betty Boot purse and an Adidas visor? <laughs> Are you joking? Let me explain something to you, Miss Capalot, heavy on the no gown. You couldn't sit with me if I put the chair behind you. Do you understand? Um, and that's okay to be ugly because some of us are ugly out here in these streets. And you know, I'm not really to judge because I don't like females like that. You're so shallow, quick to call somebody ugly. Like, what else do you have to offer? Your spirit is ugly. Your soul is ugly. Your aura is ugly. And to be quite honest with you, you're mediocre at best. You have to beat your face and put on a filter to look decent, to be pretty. So once again, you can't sit with me. Not bare-faced, not beat-faced, not nothing. Stay in your lane. And another thing, as far as the other reactors are concerned, the only reason why you're calling them ugly is because they have African features, a lot of them, and you don't like that. I'm so sick of you using your superiority, your 25%. I know you're half and half, but I say 25 because, I mean, you have mostly African features, right? So you're attacking these women, calling them ugly. Yet you have three kids with African features. None of them look European. So what does that make you look like? Like, I'm really so sick of you. Oh, yeah, the one with the big nose. Oh, so what are you saying? Because someone doesn't fit your European standard? That they're ugly? You sound stupid. And unfortunately, you have three black kids who are going to watch this later and look at you like, wow, what do you think of me? What do you think of the man you were lying next to? What, if, what do you think of the man you're laying next to right now? Like, oh, he's lighter, so it's okay. You're a colorist. I don't care what nobody says. And it's disgusting. And you can put on your fake accents all you want. I'm not jacking none of it. You could sound like Kim Kardashian one minute and Saweetie the next. Then you sound like, what's his name from um, Snowfall? What's that guy's name? You know who I'm talking about. Then you sound like him. It's just like, girl, who are you? Like, seriously, you have no identity. You don't know who you are. And I pity you. Like, I legit get secondhand embarrassment. You have no sense of self at all one minute you're like oh yeah guys um my mom and then the next minute you're like talking like saint from snowfall yeah i'm about to get my core i'm from la i need some king taco actually you don't but that's another story coming from a person who was actually from the hood like the real hood of new york city yet i am still going to remain who i am well spoken eloquent and carry myself well because that's who I am and I am not a product of my environment so you need to be who you are and stop with the facade because nobody believes you that's why I laugh at you and this is why I laughed at you when you were being disrespectful calling me a bitch and disrespecting everyone else because I know for a fact you wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight you're not like that Liv you don't want the smoke so just continue doing you, making your way downtown, walking fast. So I'm not going to judge y'all. You know, if you ugly and you want to come on here and talk about it, the next bitch, that's what you do. And that's okay. That's okay. Who am I to judge? I ain't nobody to judge you. 
That's the thing that really blows mine because you're quick to call somebody out on their physical appearance. I never attacked your physical appearance. I never spoke about how fat you are. I never spoke about your chins. I never spoke about those bags under your eyes. I never spoke about how tacky you dress. I may have said something about your Shein wardrobe, but never did I ever say it was bad. By the way, it's very unflattering. Get rid of it. Get a new sponsor. And you're exactly right. You are absolutely no one to judge, but that's all you've done since you embarked on this YouTube journey. That's how you got to the numbers you're at. But newsflash, your views aren't matching your numbers. Humble yourself, big little, because you're still small with a big number of subscribers. Which has declined because of the person you are, but no, let you tell it, it's everyone else's fault. What was me? Everybody's bullying me. They're attacking me. I'm going on a hiatus. Bye. Go to Dubai. Go to Africa. We don't care. Because of my heart, I really did feel bad for you because I know you're mentally ill and mentally unstable. But you're not going to gaslight me or manipulate me like you do your supporters. I'm sorry. You can keep those stunts to yourself. Oh, I'm going to move away. Nobody likes me. Everybody bullies me. Sis, I'm not jacking it. Go get you a bottle of crown. You be all right. Some people have to judge because they don't have a life. And it makes them feel better to talk shit about somebody else. Like, Well, I don't know who you're referring to, but never have I ever came on this platform to talk about you for an hour. You're dragging it, sis. You're really dragging it. And I don't need to speak about you to feel better about myself. I'm speaking about you to help you. You should really take my advice. Not only for your mental well-being, but I can really get you together, sis. Like, come to New York and chill with me for a little bit. Trust me. Let me give you a little makeover. Lorenzo's not going anywhere, and Gerard will be back. Ooh, I feel like they feel powerful. Like, that shit makes them feel good. What did Meg the Stallion say in that song? Mmm. Damn, I wish I knew that song. It was, it was a good-ass verse. Exhibit A, we tell you get over your lazy ass and do something with your children. What do you know? Next thing we know, you're at the amusement park. The message has been received. So yes, I do feel powerful. You're welcome. Exhibit B, we tell you do something with your children's hair. Your hair is always done. What do you know? Next thing we know, you're doing the hair. As best you can, of course. You telling us what Meg the Stallion said in the song, doesn't mean anything like what is that going to mean to us you swear you're a stallion that's the problem sis you're an ox but anyway basically she was saying talking about me don't make you any better sis it don't make you any better that's a whole fact talking about you doesn't make me any better it makes you better i don't need you to be better how i live my life makes me better than you how i treat my children makes me better than you how I respect my children in their space and my husband makes me better than you. Okay, friends, let's move on to what I came to address. It don't. And um, I can't sit with you, bitch. You could never. You could never even walk past. You could, you could probably get an autograph, some of you bitches. Uh, maybe a picture, you know what I mean? But I can't sit with you. Girl, please. Don't nobody even want to sit with you. You're absolutely right. I can never put an eggplant in my mouth while I'm pregnant by the next man. I could never get in the U-Haul with my three children and drive cross state to go chase after a man who told me not to come. He doesn't want me there. I could never. I could never join a group of women that I don't like and that I talk about for the sake of a view, for the clout, for the acceptance. I could never. I could never walk out of my house with a nightgown on, a tit sagging, bonnet on my head, whatever on my feet, crust in my eyes, to walk into a supermarket. I could never. I could never neglect my family all day and night just to sit on live pleasing people who don't even know me. For the sake of a dollar, I could never. I could never wear a plastic visor 
or a towel wrap or an Adidas visor with a graphic t-shirt and some leggings or some too tight jeans, I could never. I could never pick up random men on POF bi-weekly all for the sake of having a warm body next to me because I am desperate and yearning for attention. I could never. I would never introduce my children to a new man every two weeks, invading their space, invading their privacy. I would never. I would never bash my husband for content, calling him out of his name, embarrassing him. While my children are sitting right next to me as I'm drinking Crown and smoking cigarettes, I would never. I would never use my children as a pawn to hurt their dad because I know in all reality, I'm only hurting them. I would never. I could never be chauffeuring around a tatted toddler I just met on POF who disrespected me in front of the internet, in front of my supporters. I could never. I can never trick on random men because I'm insecure about myself and I think the only way they'll stay with me is if I trick on them and buy them things. I could never. I could never get on here claiming to be a self-proclaimed boss, B, living paycheck to paycheck, coming back on camera, struggling, complaining about the money that I turned down. I could never. I could never pay to plump my lips up to the size of my chins and get my nails done only to tell my daughter that I can't take her to Legoland. I could never. Why are you living paycheck to paycheck? I could never. I could never have a platform of 80 plus thousand subscribers and the ability to make as much money as I want and then cry broke and not have savings, I could never. I could never abuse my supporters' kindness by selling them $2 lashes for 20 plus dollars. I could never. I honestly could never go and get a pedicure and leave my toes as long as you leave yours. I could never. I could never get on this platform and put on a whole Tyler Perry production in a Kirk Franklin and family gown and pretend that I graduated, not even graduated, pretend that I got my GED? I could never. You embarrassed yourself, sis. You look dumb. Work hard for what you want, and you can attain it. It's that simple. Friends, you have my deepest apologies. I honestly don't know why I entertained this loser, but I just had to let her know. When you poke the bear, it's gonna wake up, and I'm the wrong bear to poke. Next time, I'm really gonna drag you by your chinny, chin, chins. And with that being said, friends, you already know the vibes. Like what you like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already. And I will talk to you down below and in the next video. Check out my tube.